passed through which sometime in early colonial America, 17th uh, century. Witches had a rough time back in those days. So many, particularly elderly ladies, were persecuted as uh, possessing the black magic and being responsible for all the guilt of the community, it would seem. I wonder how witches fare these days. Perhaps the most celebrated witch alive today, certainly in the English-speaking world, is Sybil Leake, our, our guest this morning in The Jackdaw and the Witches, her most recent book, A True Fable. Sybil Leake, back in those days, witches were persecuted. Today, they write books. Uh, they are also persecuted. I'm huh. sorry to say. Well, you know, you, there are more ways of killing a goose than by wringing its neck. And uh, nowadays, the witches certainly are a much better wicked, shall we put it, than she was a couple of hundred years ago. But there are still the persecutions of the ignorant. You know, man who does not understand will turn on his, his neighbor. Well, let's, let's, let's talk a little about this, the matter of the... The witch, then, is the stranger, isn't she? Yes. I say she because we'll talk about male yes. witches in a moment, mm -hmm. too. The witch is the stranger because it is really very much easier to be in the herd than grazing alone on the other side of the fence. And this is what the witch has always had to do throughout the ages. But in the ways, if I may give you an example of how a witch may be persecuted today, um, I have recently come to live in America. I intend to make this my home. I've immigrated. But in Britain, I was quite well known. I may almost say famous in several spheres, including radio and television, as a writer. I also had a very, very flourishing antique business, which, uh, when the lease ran out, my landlord said, Sybil, renounce witchcraft, and the lease will be renewed. And I had a terrible temptation, because here I was I with two boys to ring up, elderly mother and elderly aunt, and suddenly I'm faced with this in the 20th century. And so I came well, to America. Course, you know, we have this phrase, don't we, witch hunt. Yes. When we hear this is connected with political dissenters, mm -hmm. certainly throughout history, and I imagine religious dissenters. Oh, too. yes. Witch hunt. Of course. So the word does have connotations, doesn't it? Yes. Well, what is, we're supposed to be asked, what, before we ask you about the jackdaw and the witch, in particular jackdaw named Hotfoot Jackson, you say you renounce witchcraft. What is witchcraft? I was known all over Europe as the leader of witchcraft, all through the time when witchcraft, the witchcraft laws were not repealed. You know, they were not were repealed. Were witchcraft laws? Oh, yes, until 1951, and I helped to get them repealed because there are many archaic laws which are, should not be there. But nobody really worried too much about me. I was on very friendly terms with the community and the outside uh, community. But um, the word witch in America has very different connotations than in Europe. As I say, nobody bothered about this, except people who were a little worried about anything, like my landlord. You know, if a colored person had walked through our village street, he would have sworn that we were being invaded by Africans. His mind was so prejudiced and twisted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I had held this show... Here, yeah, I see a parallel here. I see a parallel. But the mind which will... Um, you know, seek uh, revenge on a witch, will also seek it in anything that it does not understand. And this is why I lecture extensively on witchcraft and psychic phenomena, because I think once we get to an understanding, then we release fears. You said witchcraft and psychic phenomena. So you connect a uh, witchcraft today, then you would, you would, uh, would be a euphemism, would it not, for, for psychic phenomena? Not exactly, no, because one can be interested in psychic phenomena without... Um, adopting the religion of witchcraft. Well, what is the religion of witchcraft? The religion of witchcraft is a belief in a universal mind, a supreme being from which all forces of life come and which by a process of reincarnation all forces of life go back. The difficulty, of course, occurs in the fact that uh, witches do believe that there can be a manipulation uh, of events in this world helped by outside the outside world. And of course, this is occultism probing in the unknown, the mystique and the mysterious. So uh, then. Uh, and the fear is there. Fear, too. You believe in the. Then you believe in reincarnation. This has Most to be one of the aspects of yes, it. Yes, yes. Uh, well, what were you? In the I don't know. Mind, what do you think you were? I really don't know. I've said we once made a tape that went back about 550 years, and uh, it seemed that I was always involved in some form. You see the tape of magic. Went back to yes, we in the regression under hypnotism, which a parapsychologist did with me some time ago. 
This tape went past. Yeah. The parapsychologist is a psychologist, basically, who goes, para means farther, way out, who goes into the realms of the other world as well as this. And you would be, say, you'd be uh, perhaps more interested, I suppose, in the experiments of Dr. Ryan at Duke, would you? Well, quite frankly, I was to have the greatest admiration for Dr. Ryan at Duke. Uh, I understood all that he was doing when I was 12 years old, and I think I, we have progressed a long, long way, because he was only involved with experiments in lab the laboratory, and the ESP, uh, ESP phen uh, phenomena does not function at its best in laboratory so conditions. At a time with some, you, perhaps you would describe as uh, skeptics. Well, skeptics, I love skeptics. Anybody who has anything to say must always meet a skeptic because ultimately the skeptic either must admit he's a fool or be your best advocate. You don't mind So he can your, take his choice. You don't mind then being your, shall we say, fool-skeptic. Not right. at all. all right, Not at all. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be then uh, at this moment... I love the skeptic. Gadfly. I'll be gadfly. Yes, you'll be gadfly. Okay. So, uh, but remember the end that gadfly came to. <laughs> Lived for 24 hours and had everything. I better but then it. there was no more. I'm, I'm going over to <laughs> So it don't witchcraft. be God, Godfly. The trap door and witchcraft, witches, witchcraft, and myths, myth and legend uh, has always, in folk music, of course, and folk song and folklore, mm -hmm. the aspect of the mythic is always powerful there. But don't you see the myth as always having an element of fact in it? Mm -hmm. That your folklore always went back to something that was basically a truth at that time and which, over a period of years, has some of the truth that's got a little lost, but the basic truth exists always in folklore, folk songs, folk dances. You know, the Watusi, which is a so-called modern dance, is an African folk dance. <laughs> but how many people dance in the, the, the Watusi? The English Morris dance has of course, of yes. And, and goes back into witchcraft, the, the hobby horse that, dance. Now, suppose we, now, your whole family... You, you, you are from a heritage of English witches, aren't you? Mm, but not English witches. No. Irish and Polish. Irish and Polish. Mm -hmm. Well, are there differences? We, uh, this concerned gypsies, too? I'm, I'm asking well, you yes. Generally. The uh, area where I lived in Britain uh, was one of the last strongholds. Is that one of the last strongholds of the New last... Forest. Re yes, the New Forest of Britain, of the last remaining races of real gypsies. I mean, the, the people who do not live in houses, would not live in houses, have a code of their own. And it is a very dignified code. It may not be our code, but this code works in their race and their tribes. They have a very patriarchal uh, code, and uh, certainly they do understand witchcraft. They understand herbs, they understand uh, healing, and they understand that in witchcraft you have this affinity to nature this harmonious existence, really, spiritual existence. And several questions. Uh, I spoke of healing. Uh, would, uh, I know it's a phrase that may be rather dangerous, faith healing, is the witch, the, uh, does the witch subscribe to medical practice? No, I do not go to doctors. Um, my sons, Stephen and Julian, I think I've never had medicine or vitamin pill in their lives. They're very handsome boys, they have wonderful framework, and they have not had any uh, fads or foibles on diet. They've not been vegetarians or anything like that. They've just had what I call a well-balanced diet. Well, suppose an accident is to assume for the moment, you know. Well, I think... An accident falls, mm -hmm. hit by a car, and the leg is broken, let us say, mm -hmm. or fractured. What in that instance? Well, I think that it is ridiculous not to use, if you wish to, uh, anything that is availing in the century in which you live. I, I don't think that one should always be archaic in the approach to medicine. Take the best of both worlds is really what I have always believed in, but your in point every is, way. I see. But your point is you will not lean on There's a recent book called The Doctors. That <laughs> but very few, witches, uh, very few <laughs> witches would be run over by a motor car. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> How come? <laughs> well, certain precautions would be taken. I heard somebody said the other day to me, oh, do be careful. I said, this isn't my day for being run over to buy a motor car. <laughs> well, it isn't your day. Now, you have a, what, what shall we call this? Uh, premonition, but in witchcraft terms it's something else, isn't it? Well, you know, it's yes, it uh, is looking into the future it is seeing uh, future events 
It is rather manipulating your life around these future events to the best advantage. And this, of course, is a form of magic. Is there a matter of will involved here? Since Certainly. You... Will has to be involved. Well, how is the will involved if you say it is not your day, that it's not something preordained? Uh, to a certain extent, I think that one can be pressurized into major events of your life. And a, it's a moot point whether being knocked down with a car may or may not be a major event. We it all... might be more devastating not to be knocked down with a car and find your house burnt down, your husband left you. You know, which this could have been the worst thing in your life. Sybil Leith is our guest, the celebrated witch from England, whose book is called The Jackdaw and the Witch. Uh, the Jackdaw, this is an actual story. You have a jackdaw. Oh, yes, How indeed. How do you describe a jackdaw? Jackdaw is like a little raven. Is that it? Yes, it belongs to the raven family. Now, the raven, with his pose raven. Yes, nevermore. And your jackdaw says evermore, I think. And well, my jackdaw says quite a lot of things. Mm -hmm. He says help, and he said nevermore. And he will say Sybil, and then he'll say help again. What is it about the jackdaw and the raven that makes them uh, so special? Where These birds have a very special history. They've always been used in divination. Uh, many people associate the cat with witchcraft. But in Europe, the cat was not introduced until the 14th century, when witches had been known for thousands of years before. Um, if you go back into Mexican history, South American history, I'm referring to witchcraft history now, and European history, Egyptian, uh, Byzantine, the bird, and particularly the raven family, have always been highly esteemed in the temples and... The raven in, and the, in the world of magic. divining qualities? Yes, they have. There's a special something about these birds. And uh, Mr. Hotfoot Jackson, That's your the, jackdaw, uh, the character in The Jackdaw and the Witch, has this, well, more than anything else that I've ever seen um, or known. He is a very particular bird. He's a magical bird indeed. And I think in the book he comes through as this wonderful, magical character. People are always saying to me, he can't be real, but he, he is real. And he exists for people to see. Prentice Hall, one of the publishers of this book, how did, how did you, uh, the jackdaw and the witch, which you call a true fable? Yes. Now, that seems to be a paradox. Yes, it's deliberate. Paradox, isn't it? <laughs> yes, true it's, fable. It is, because the style of the book is written, almost seems like a fable. Uh, this is the point you cannot believe this, is, this jackdaw and its relationship with the boy, my son Julian, can really exist in, re in 20th century life. And so it must be a fable. But then you see, without too much magic, I can say, but here is the boy. Here is the jackdaw, Mr. Hotfoot Jackson. So this is true. It may have a fable quality, but this is a true fable. This but is a living legend. You spoke of your boy. You have uh, two boys. You have Julian yes. and... and uh, Stephen. Stephen. I was unaware that witches had families. Has no. it always been so? Yes, because so witchcraft, uh, the knowledge of witchcraft, has always been passed down verbally by word of mouth in families. So yours has been a, a, a witch family for, oh, yes. what, for generations? For at least 500 years that we know of. Years. I had a very famous ancestor called Molly Lee, who died about 300 years ago, 302 years ago, actually. And uh, she also had a jackdaw. Uh, Not exactly a coincidence, I don't think. Uh, uh, does Molly Lee, do you commune with her on occasion? No, I don't. I, um, I know the legend of her. I've seen the place where she was reluctantly buried. And, uh, of course, the legend is quite interesting. Well, she was reluctantly buried, you Yes, because there's always some slight difficulty about what to do with the body when a witch is deceased, oh, even in a... these days. And, you know, nobody wants them in the churchyard, and so they put them right on the edge of the churchyard, facing the wrong way. Oh, uh, like in true death. Christian like uh, <laughs> generosity, <Yes>. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so even in death, they must feel an outcast. But in the case of Molly Lee, this happened, and the witches, the local witches, dragged the stones from the forest to her grave and made this wonderful tomb for her, which nobody can move. So, uh, by the way, you, you would not be Christian then? No, no, no. no, it's, no. It's, it's, witchcraft is the religion. Witchcraft uh, is religion. Yes. And the fact that one says, uh, I'm always, you know, being misquoted on this, the fact that I do not believe in Jesus Christ as a God who walked on the earth does not mean that I do not see him as one of the great teachers of the time. I really believe that this man was the greatest teacher, but was not, as far as many people are concerned, God. 